Hello there. So this time I got a question via email about how to learn about operating systems. How do they work? How to analyze what's going on in an operating system? And also how are they constructed? Basically, how to learn about operating system internals. And uh, well, I don't have a great answer to it, but I decided to maybe give you some hints where you can start and also hints on how you can approach the topic. So I guess I'll start with going through some web pages and books which I have, and then in the end I'll, well, or in the meanwhile, I'll talk about the approach. So I guess one approach is basically to start from the low level to how does the operating system interact with the CPU, with the motherboard, with the devices. And I don't think there is a better place to start than, well, I guess there are better places, but one place to start is to look at the Intel manuals, Intel, or Intel software developer manuals, and especially, I mean, the volume three, which um, contains all the juicy information about how an operating system needs to interact with a CPU. Now, this isn't really a fun lecture, as in, you know, it's not really something you would read as a bedtime story. You would actually need to force yourself to read through some volumes or some chapters, but in the end, it is worth it. At least I think so. Um, you can order these also online. There is, uh, I think uh, it, it costs around 200 bucks right now for the full set, but if you prefer, prefer paper form, then it might be worth it. Okay. So, um, the next thing I have is actually on the more theoretical side, as in, you know, the operating system needs to have a couple of things, like, for example, file system or the scheduler or um, the spooler, for example. So, these all the algorithms which are used there are des described in more theoretical books like for example the operating system concepts by Abby Silvershaus which you can see on the screen by the way all the books and links will be in the description down below so don't worry if you didn't um, catch the name. Now um, there are I guess two more authors which are worth mentioning here. First one, and I do have this book in Polish, so, yeah, but it is not a Polish book. It's called, um, I guess, Operating System Structure and I don't know how it's built. I have no idea. It looks like this in the Polish version, and it's by William Stollings. So I will also give you a link down below. Now, there is one more book, which is, I guess, considered a classic. It's Operating Systems by Andrew Tannenbaum et al. Which looks like this. I think this is the original cover, just translated into Polish again. So, and yeah, then as you can see, it's a rather thick book. So these three would probably cover the theory behind operating systems. Now, to, I guess, get back to the low level, stuff which I mentioned already with the Intel manual, you might want to look at wiki.osdev.org which is a great resource for implementing your own operating system. This is something you might want to do just to you know understand how a bootloader works or understand how the kernel is bootstrapped. I guess you might never finish your operating system, that's pretty normal so don't worry about it, but you will still learn something in the process. Now going more into real operating systems, not the theory, not creating your own, but you know, the ones which are actually used like Windows, Linux, FreeBSD, or OS X, right, OS X. I guess for Windows, the best resource is, and I guess always was, is Microsoft Developers Network. This site has a lot of great information about uh, Windows, about the mechanisms which are there, about the APIs, but it's not the only resource. The obvious resource, the obvious book you can get, and or actually, I guess now, a couple of volumes of that book is Windows Internals. This is actually part two. And um, yeah, this is just a must have. If you're into Windows, you need to read these books. It's uh, a, a complete, um, it's mandatory. 
I guess if you're more into, but no, let's stay with Windows. So, or I have a huge stack of books in front of me. So, one thing you can look at, and I do recommend it, is Windows Sys Internals Administrator Reference. It's just a reference for all the Sys Internals tools, which are basically low level tools for Windows, but can display processes and some information about them or can interact with some parts of a system which um, other utilities don't usually do. And it's a rather good, uh, all the tools are by the way uh, free to download from the Microsoft website and uh, this book has a reference to them all. And as you can see, it's also rather thick. I guess if you'd go to learn the operating system from a little more in-depth perspective from an attacker's perspective you might want to look for example this is a rather old book but i i liked it it's called rootkits uh, i think subverting windows kernel was the original name mm, i think this also is also the original cover but again this is a book in polish and uh, there's a newer book about the same topic called the rootkit arsenal which uh, you might also want to take a look at I guess like things like the file system or uh, the process list and so on are described really well in these books because well, these are the basics of how rootkits work, right? Going further, if you're... Oh no, I have actually one more Windows book. So it is, uh, again, a translation, a Polish one. It is Windows NT 2000 Native API. Um, a native, native API is actually the part between the kernel and the Win API, or actually you might think of it as basically it's the kernel API. So there's actually a reference guide, also a, a rather old one, but it has some information which, if you prefer paper form, might be more useful than what is on Microsoft Developers Network. Cool. Now we can move to, I guess, Linux. And I don't think I have any Linux books. I do have this one, which is by Enrico Perla et al. It's a guide to kernel exploitation. Well, if you learn about kernel exploitation, you do need to learn about the mechanics of the kernel. And while well, staying with Linux kernel, you might want to actually download the kernel itself and look through the sources. Look how the kernel is structured, what parts of the kernel are there, and maybe you'd like to read deeper into some source and understand how it really works. So uh, I actually do recommend downloading the source code. I usually have it at hand if I need to check something because you know the source code in the end is the best documentation. Cool, then FreeBSD I guess is another Unix operating, Unix-like operating system. Uh, well, I guess it is Unix. So there is a book called The Design and Implementation of FreeBSD. It looks like this which I guess is something which you might want to take a look if you're into FreeBSD. FreeBSD is really cool, I really like that project. So yeah, this is something you might want to check out. And also it's again, open source, so you can download it, you can uh, read the source code. There is no problem there. Then I have a Polish book actually, which doesn't have an English translation, but um, I guess this is basically to just give you an idea, but there are also books about other operating systems. Like for example, this one is about QNX, which is, QNX is a real-time operating system, which is Unix-like. It's pretty cool as well. So yeah, I just found it on one of the universities and I knew I had to buy it. <laughs> I also got another Polish translation. This is um, the kernel of Unix, I guess. Let me see if there's a... Uh... Oh, Unix internals when you frontiers, I guess, is the original title of this book. This is the author. So, yeah, this is another OS book which you might want to take a look at. And I have another one about Windows, uh, which is uh, about memory managers this time. What makes it page? And this is about the Windows 7 uh, 64-bit memory manager and virtual machine, how, uh, sorry, virtual memory. How does that work? Um, another thick book and is uh, really recommended by a lot of people. Apart from that, you might want to look at the Mac OS X internals. This is also another thick book, but this time about the Apple operating system. And um, you might want to look at uh, React OS if you're into Windows, because that's a 
open source oh sorry open source uh, or implementation of windows or it's actually more like implementing an operating system which is supposed to be fully compatible with windows nt and um, that family of windows so if you for example want to understand some mechanism which is already implemented in react os uh, you can just take a look at the source code and that might give you more than you know hours of reverse engineering with ida and one more approach to understanding operating systems is actually doing forensics on them. So let's assume that you have a memory dump or a you know, disk image and you want to understand what was happening in the system at the moment of the dump. For example, what processes were running, what was on the screen, what was in the clipboard. There is a great open source um, framework for forensics which is called Volatility. And... Uh, yeah, I would totally recommend getting it and trying to play around with it, do a dump of your system, see what you can learn from just the dump of um, of the RAM. And I guess you can also, you know, look inside the volatility. How does it work? How does it browse the kernel structures? How does it look for them in the memory to, to learn something about it? So, um, yeah, I'm... Pretty sure this isn't, you know, the full concrete path which you should walk to while exploring operating systems, but I guess these books or the tools or the approaches which I mentioned might give you an idea where to start. It's a rather interesting journey, so I fully recommend it. And I guess that's it. If you have any suggestions on how a person can start with uh, operating system internals, how one could learn them, I do put them in the comments down below. That will be really appreciated by a lot of people. So thank you for doing that. And I guess that's it. So thank you and see you next time.